says there's what? Life after what? Death. Life after death. Many today, because the situation of the world we have found ourselves, because the increase in technology, so many today don't believe that there's life after death. You understand me? Many today, they feel, well, if I die, that is all. It is better for me to die and then all my misery, all my sorrows will be gone. If I die, that's the end of life. If I die, at least the pain and the struggle I'm struggling in this world will be over. If I die, the torment that I've been tormented here and there will be over. So it's better for me to die and let's just forget about it. After all, this is how all life is. When you die, you are gone. When you die, you are forgotten. When you die, it just seems you have been enraged. And so, I refer to that. I'm sorry. I am very sorry for you that is saying that. If you are not a child of God, if you have not surrendered your life to Jesus, that statement is a very terrible statement because if you die, there is life at the other side of death. When you die now, you will find yourself in another place. You will find yourself in somewhere else. So there is life after death. After death is not the end of life. After death, there is the beginning. Or will I say, the continuation of life, but the beginning of a new life. So if you are not a Christian, you need to be very careful. Because if you close your eyes to death, you have begun a new journey in the realm after death. And that is also called life. But the question is, will it be a meaningful life? Or it will not be a regretful life? If you are living presently a regretful life on planet earth and you die without Jesus Christ, automatically the new life you will begin after death will be a terrible one. It's not because I'm saying that, but it's because Jesus Christ said there is life after death. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were he dead, shall live again. That way I read in the book of John chapter 11. John 11 verse 25. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Even before Jesus Christ said that, Mary and Martha, they also had that belief. Because when their brother Lazarus was dead, the scenario that led to Jesus making this statement was when Lazarus was dead. Lazarus was the brother of Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha are part of the disciples of Jesus. When Jesus heard that Lazarus was sick, the Bible says Jesus Christ delayed for two more days. And the journey from where Jesus was to where Mary and Martha was will take another two days. So Jesus delayed two days. And on the second day, he started the journey. So it took him another two days to get there. So before he got there, the very day the report came to him that he did not go, that was the day the man Lazarus died. But Jesus Christ was trying to prove something. Jesus Christ was trying to make his listeners to understand that something is about to happen. Something is about to happen. Because Lazarus, he told himself, when they were saying, if you read the book, I'm just giving, summarizing. If you read from the beginning of uh, John chapter 11, the disciple said, Jesus Christ said, our, our brother Lazarus, our brother Lazarus um, uh, is not feeling fine. Uh, and uh, I mean, he's asleep, he's sleeping. I will go and wake him up. The disciple said, if he's sleeping, then he will wake up. Why do we need to go and wake up? And the Bible says, Jesus Christ told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. But don't worry, we are going to wake him up. Hallelujah. 
we are going to wake him up. Now, even though Jesus Christ went there and brought Lazarus back to life, where I'm going is this, Mary and Martha, when they saw Jesus, they said, Jesus Christ, you, uh, if you have been here, we know our brother wouldn't have died. If you have come, we know our brother wouldn't have died. Jesus Christ said, no problem, no problem, no problem. I know that is true, but I've come to show you something else. And Jesus Christ was asking, was asking, um, uh, was telling uh, uh, Mary, I mean, he was telling Martha in verse 23, he says, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. What was Martha talking about? Martha was saying that even though my brother is dead now, Jesus, I know that one day he's going to rise up on the day of resurrection. What does that mean to you? That is to tell you that someday, that's a different message entirely, I'm not going there now. But someday Jesus Christ is coming back. The day of revelation is the day Jesus Christ will come again. And the Bible said, the dead in Christ will rise up first. The dead in Christ will rise up first. And if the dead in Christ rise up first, what are we trying to say? That's to try to give you a scenario that there is life. The fact that they are dead does not mean they are gone forever. Now, we are not going as I said. That's not where we are going. Where I'm going now, Jesus Christ said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. If you are making a terrible call, 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 uh, comment, that look to me, look, 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 my friend, this life is miserable. It's better for me to die. When I die, it's over. It is not over without Christ. It is not over without Jesus Christ. Because without Christ, when you die, Jesus Christ said, if you believe in him, though you are dead, yet shall you live. You are, you are living on. There's life after death. You are living on. You are going to live again. But the question is that, how are you going to live? Are you going to live on as a child of God? Or are you going to live on as a child of the devil? Because if you have not accepted Jesus Christ, it means you have accepted the offer. The devil has offered to you. You have accepted the offer of the devil. Death is not the end of life. Death is the beginning of a new life. And the new life. When the Bible said, Whosoever believeth in Jesus, in John chapter 3 verse 16, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. When the Bible says something like that, it means there's going to be a peaceful life, everlasting life in God's kingdom. Not for what Jesus Christ said in the book of John chapter 14. He said, I go and prepare a place for you. And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back to take you so that where I am, where I am there will my servant be also. The place Jesus Christ will go and will come and take you into. If you are still alive, we come, the Bible says we will be changed, we will be transformed. But if you are dead, you will be living somewhere. And when it comes, it takes you now, finally, to the kingdom of the living God. But if you have rejected Jesus as your Lord and Savior on planet earth, and you die, then you have accepted the offer of the devil to be in the kingdom of the devil. Because there is life after death. Martha said, I know you will rise on the day of resurrection. But Jesus Christ said, no, I am the resurrection and the life. If you accept me, you receive life. So for you to receive true life, your true life, you can only receive it through Jesus Christ. The Bible says in John chapter 1 again, it says, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. That is Jesus. In him was life. And he said, John 14 verse 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if you accept Jesus, you have accepted life. If you accept Jesus, you accept life. And when you have life, you have the light of God. And you will live forever. And if you reject him also, you will also live forever. But in torment. Now I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. You know, when Jesus Christ 
was speaking to the disciples in the book of John, Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18, he was telling them that if any part of your body causes you to sin, in order for you to do what? To cast it away. Now, look at what I'm going to read one, one, one part. John chapter, I mean, Matthew chapter 18, verse 8. Look at what the Bible says. It says, Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life. <laughs> it is better for you after death to enter into a meaningful life and life in Christ, life in God's paradise, life in God's kingdom. It is better for thee to enter into life all and men rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. I told, I told you, I told you, I told you. I said, if you reject Jesus Christ, you have accepted the offer of who? Of the devil. And if you accept the offer of the devil, you will also live for heaven. But where are you going to live forever with, with the offer of the devil? Everlasting what? Fire. What did I say? Everlasting fire. Not what the Bible says. So any part of your body that was like, no, 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 I, I, I not this message before. Just like, don't say, you know, when you're hurt, you cut your hand off. When you're hurt, you cut it off. That's all the same. If you want to understand the, the content of it, this guy is trying to bring a scenario here. Is it this your hand that is making you to commit sin against God? You cannot do without using this your hand to sign, write the additional zero to the check or whatsoever, the account so that you will steal money from your company or use this hand to, 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 to touch what you are not supposed to touch. Then you need to do what? You need to sacrifice that hand. You need to speak to that hand and make sure from today you will not sin against God. You won't touch any negative thing. You will, that's a different message. That, you see, I don't want to go into that. But what Jesus Christ is trying to say, it is better for you now to sacrifice this hand from committing sin, to prevent your hand and your leg from going to places you are not supposed to go, joining gangs you are not supposed to gang and enjoy. It is better for you to retreat your leg and say, leg, you are not going today. I am saying at all. I have decided I am not going to do this again. It is better for you to take that decision now that after you are dead, without that decision, you are still doing all those things and then you will die. When you open your eyes, you will find yourself, the Bible says, you are in everlasting fire. Are you listening to me? So, Jesus Christ is saying today, He said, Look, He said, It is better for you to enter into a life. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God is the kingdom of life than for you to gather your own body in sin and you die and you go to everlasting fire. But that will not be your portion in Jesus' name. So, from this scenario that we are now looking at, there is what? Life after death. Don't deceive yourself. When I die, it's over. You are dying in sin. Don't die in sin. Die in Jesus. And in the book of Luke. Hallelujah. In the book of Luke, where is it again? The book of Luke chapter... Is it Luke chapter 16 now? Tell me about me in the book of Luke chapter 16. I think it's chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. I'm going to read from verse 19. Uh, our time is gone. I'm not going to read it. But the story, the, 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 let me just read the first verse. Luke chapter 16, verse 19 said, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed some junk, some sumptuously every day. And verse 20 said, And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sauce. If you read down, the Bible says, The rich man died, and the poor man Lazarus also died. Now, what happened? When both of them died, they found themselves somewhere. The Bible says the rich man found himself in a place of torment. Remember Jesus Christ said, the better to enter life, man, than to gather your whole body into what? Everlasting fire. Now in this book of Luke chapter 19, I mean Luke chapter 16, from verse 19 following, the rich man who refused Jesus, the rich man who refused to do good, Found himself in hell, the lake of fire. He was born in, or will I say in hell? In hell, he, he was found, he found, let me just say, he found himself in hell. Hell is just because that's a different message you're telling me. <laughs> I'm giving you four different messages now, but I don't, now I don't go into in depth with them because that's a, talking about 
the lake of fire, hell, and so on is a different mess entirely. I'm not going there now. Well, I'm not giving you the surface of something I'm trying to pass across to you. They might find themselves in hell. In verse 23, the Bible says, In hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Lazarus was dead. The rich man was dead. But when the rich man died, was it over? No, it wasn't over. When he died, the Bible said he saw himself in hell, being tormented. And where he was in hell, being tormented, he looked across and he saw Lazarus, the poor man. Lazarus, the man he refused to help. Lazarus, the one that accepted Jesus Christ. He saw him in the bosom of Abraham. He saw Lazarus enjoying. And he was calling, oh, Father Abraham, please, oh, I am, I am tormented here. I, I am thirsty. I need water. Please tell Lazarus to, to put his hands in water. And at least let him cool my tongue. And Abraham says, it's not possible. Lazarus cannot talk to Lazarus. That there's a big gulf. There's a total separation between you and Lazarus now. On planet Earth, we can be mixing together, we can join our body together, we can shake our hands, you can look at me and say, I will not help you, and fine, don't help me. The way you separated yourself from Lazarus when he was alive, that's the way you have separated yourself from Lazarus even after you are dead. Now you are dead, is it over? Jesus Christ said it's not over. From that scripture, it is what? It is not over. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Also applies to those who have rejected him. Those who have not believed in him. The Bible says they are condemned already. If you don't believe in Jesus, you are condemned already. And that's what the Bible said again. In the book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 20, the Bible said that, that it is appointed unto man once to die. And after that, the judgment. After that, condemnation. After that, damnation. After that, resection. After that, separation. That's what that judgment, the, the word judgment there means. According to my most of that, after that, the judgment. It is separation. It is damnation. It is condemnation. When you die in sin, you are condemned. But you find yourself. So this rich man found himself somewhere. It was not over. It was the beginning of a new life. And that life for that rich man was a life of torment. I pray that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. So Jesus is calling you today that there is life after death. Lazarus was in the bosom of Abraham. Lazarus was in paradise. Lazarus was in the place God kept people. God usually keep people before the final day Jesus will come again. Lazarus was there. If your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, they are Christian, they are also in that bosom of Abraham. But if they are not, they are in torment. And then the rich man says, you read that? It's okay now, now if that's the case, send Lazarus to go and, uh, and go and warn my brother and my sisters. Because this place is terrible, I don't want them to come here. And Abraham said, Lazarus cannot go and tell them. If Lazarus even wake up from the dead and tell them, they will not believe. They have other prophets, they have Elijah, they have Elisha, they have other prophets there that will tell them. If they cannot listen to those ones who have encountered God, who have done miracles, neither will they believe if somebody rises up from what? From the dead. Is that not true today in our own generation? Has God not raised many people from the dead today? Have they not stood in the television, on the radio? Have they not written books and say I was dead and now I'm alive again? You people believe in Jesus Christ. Do you believe the story? You don't believe them, you call them fiction. But today, the scripture says, there's life after death. What is your decision? Die and go to hell? Or die and go to Abraham's bosom? Let us pray.